anti-spectrometer. But anyway, it's, I have now a, a, a tool to work with and to try to analyze here these pa paintings. And I do here pigment analysis. You can do the pigment analysis even the, through the glass here. You don't have to unframe a painting here again. And here I just show you one example. A very old painting, a very old painting, and we have here, it's a beautiful one, these four monks, and we don't know who they are. And there was a guess that this here could be the founder of the Taklung Monastery, Tampa Chempo, and he lived from 1142 to 1210. Possibly it's him, and this is possibly his teacher, the teacher of him. And this is the teacher of the teacher of him. And that's the teacher of the teacher of the teacher of him. So this is what we call a lineage. Going back, 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 back to Buddha. Who knows? Possibly it's true. How can you check? First of all, you can determine the age of this painting. And you do that by carbon-14 dating. You look at the organic material of the canvas, for example, and see how old it is. And it has been built, building in at its creation some carbon-14. And carbon-14, in addition to carbon-12, carbon-14 is radioactive and decays as a function of time. So we can, can measure the age of that canvas. And if we do that with a linear accelerator mass spectrometer at ETH, with this machine you can do that. And you get then this kind of decay curves. And you can go in and measure a radiocarbon age here, and you can determine the, the time when possibly this material has been produced. And what we find is 1229 plus or minus 61 years. And that's at least to some extent after 1210 when this monastery has been founded. So it could be true that these four monks are those which we think are, are they. Then we can also do pigment analysis. We have here the different pigments. We have the blue, in, which is indigo here. We have the green, which is a, a mixture of indigo and orpiment of yellow. We have the yellow here, orpiment, arsenic sulfide. We have cinnabar and orpiment mix here, the orange. We can determine all these different pigments. And when we look at these pigments, we find but these are not typically Tibetan pigments. These are, in essence, Nepalese pigments. And it's very likely that at that very early time in Tibetan history that Nepalese were coming into Tibet and were doing the paintings for the, the, Net, the Tibetans who are not, were not yet so skilled at that particular time. So this is most likely the work of a Nepalese painter at that early date. Is that true? Let's look now at a real Nepalese painting. And you remember that this charming Maheshwari here with her beautiful earrings, the sun and the moon incorporated in the earrings, ornaments all over her, the painting. It's a beautiful painting. And I often have gentlemen coming to my house and they fall in love with this deity. And they think that would be a companion for me. But I tell them, be careful with ladies. When you get involved with a lady, look at her back first. And, and then I rotate the painting and show the back side. And the back side of the painting here is Agni, the deity of fire. And that Agni, dark Agni will burn you to death when you come too near to his lady. Be careful with ladies. Lady can be dangerous. That's Maheshwari. That's Agni. Beautiful painting. And you, you look then at the, the pigments of this painting. That's not what I wanted to show you. But probably, probably the paint. The, let's see. Let's go on. No, it's missing. But anyway, when you would look at, at the, the pigments of this painting, 
here which I showed you come back come back here when you look at the pigments of this painting you find exactly the same as the one which we found in, in Tibet which we associated with a Nepalese painter so it could be true could be true I mean this is all guesswork and you are never completely sure what you say but anyway it's a possibility and I don't want to go into much more details here you can analyze these paintings beautifully it's also very nice stories I mean Milarepa he's a very charming uh, monk who is actually the greatest uh, poet of Tibet so to say the Shakespeare of Tibet you have to come here here you are here that's Milarepa and he has a very nice life story which is shown on this tanka which I don't want to go into too much detail I mean Milarepa he was again a very bad student like me this here is Marpa his teacher teaching here and Milarepa is sitting down there but he didn't perform well so I mean he's being treated here properly by Marpa that's Marpa that's this, this poor Milarepa he's being hit that's what one should do with the poor students I don't know, hopefully not here in Tumkur, but that's what they seem to have done in Tibet. And that's the wife of Marpa, and she feels so sorry for the student and tells her husband, please stop, please stop, don't kill him completely. And he stopped. And Mar uh, Milarepa is walking home, sad that the master has treated him that way with his books under his arm. And he feel in gratitude to, to Marpa's wife, he helps her here to milk the cow. He forms a chair, she can sit on him and more easily milk the cow. That's what you have to do when, when a, a lady is doing something for you. You help her. And here he helps her in, in, here he helps her in the cooking and then finally he gets his butter tea. And then he has to build the tower, the famous tower. I don't want to go into more detail, but it's fascinating. It's really fascinating stories which you can find in these paintings. And I enjoy that so much. And it's such a rich culture. And I profit so much from it. And I like that. And it's really a passion. It's a, it's a very beautiful passion which I, I have now, in addition to music, which is also very important. But it's important for you that you also have some kind of a passion. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be music, it can be sports, it can be whatever. But you need something in addition to your profession. You need something else. And then don't forget your responsibility. Don't forget that you are not just a playboy or a playgirl can, can, who can do what it, it wants. You have a, a function. And you ha are responsible for a beneficial global future of everybody. And you know that education is the most powerful weapon which we can use to change the world. So education, so our function at the universities is important. We can have an impact on our world. And finally, after all, we need role models. And you see, that's me. That's you, and these are your role models. For example, Professor Charma. Who is him? The black one or the grey one? One of the two is, is Professor Charma. And the other one you can designate yourself. Anyway, we need this kind of role models in, to, in order to find our pathway into a be beneficial future. And with that, I'd like to wish you a good, happy time here at Tumkur and thank you for your attention. I request Honorable Vice Chancellor to propose a vote of thanks. Before I propose the vote of thanks, as a mark of respect, I shall be grateful if you could please stand up and give a standing ovation to your uh, life, your ups and downs. Please, please be seated. We are most grateful to you for your scintillating, valuable lecture 
and also an advice. We wish you all the best in your life. May God give you good health, prosperity. We request you to please visit us frequently and deliver lecture. I thank you very much. Thank you one and all. We have our uh, guests waiting for you in our room. Let us uh, part now. Thank you very much. Good. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks, Jane, very much.